Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion, which you might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today, slightly different view, I'm going to be talking about the awesome plant that you might be able to see behind me, and I'm still pulling the leaf up, believe it or not. This is the Anthurium vitarifolium. And as always with these videos, I will have chapters down below. So if you want to skip to the bit that you want to see, please feel free to. But for the new people around, just basically some ground rules. These reviews are based on my experience in my conditions with the care that I give these plants. So it might differ from yours, but hopefully what I want for these reviews to be is a repository where people can go and check out a video of somebody else's experience. Hopefully some people will share their experiences in the comments down below and you can get a more rounded kind of idea of what it means like to actually have that plant in your care. Now let's dive into the first topic. So talking about the background of this plant and you might be able to see and I'll bring this up again this is an exceptionally difficult plant to film. <laughs> So I thought I'd bring you here so you might be able to see it a bit better. You might be able to notice if I leave, if I move some of the foliage out, it is in a net pot at the moment with some pond and it's got a drip tray that's currently being used as a water reservoir. But talking about how this plant came into my care and as always with these videos, for the people that really want to get some close-up views on this, I will have a B-roll at the very end of the video and you might be able to see a bit more of this plant up close. So I was looking for this for a while. There wasn't that many of them at least available in the UK when I first got this. I think this is either two or three years old now. I will have it obviously in the video title. I will also as always try to put an image here from my plant care app on what this plant looked like when I first got it. But I was fortunate enough after a while of searching to find it from ironically enough a local plant seller and the plant seller at least here in the UK was Eastern Tropicals and Sarah Sarah is lovely if you if you live in the UK and you've not had a chance to check out her website please do I will see about putting a link down in the description below obviously this isn't sponsored but great plant store online and a great individual that runs it as well very very personable basically but so yeah I was able to actually physically drive it's not that far away from my house physically drive and pick up this plant I think she was still she had a few so I was able to even select which one I wanted which was just mind-boggling but uh, yeah I mean this was a plant that wasn't didn't always come up for sale and I'll touch a bit more about that in terms of availability but after I got it home the rehab for this plant was relatively straightforward it wasn't one that was particularly difficult and I think out of a lot of the anthuriums that I own this possibly has to be one of the easiest ones to care for and we'll dive into it a bit more in the other sections but yeah it kind of acclimated relatively quickly to my environment and there wasn't any real issues when I picked it up it was a relatively healthy plant it was substantial it wasn't anywhere near as big as this is I'm trying to think if there's any of the original leaves maybe something this size when I first got it but nothing nothing kind of major basically but yeah a very very cool anthurium that's very different from other anthuriums out there and I know several people have said this but it does feel very leathery it's not velvety and it does feel a bit like straps it looks a bit like a belt so very very cool the one thing to bear in mind about these these are awesome plants if you've got a high shelf somewhere they still get some decent light basically but obviously you can't put anything else on there because it won't be getting enough light from the top this is one that you can put at the very top of a shelf and the leaves will cascade down from that shelf and give it the light and be able to capture the light that it needs so this is a great plant to fill difficult high high places in your house as long as it's still getting light but yeah this is this is a very cool plant for that reason 
But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say about background. There was nothing particularly exciting about this, but in a good way, like this plant, it was very, very cool when I actually found it, basically. But yeah, let's move on to the next topic. So the next topic is speed of growth. And obviously this is an anthurium and it does follow a very kind of anthurium speed when it terms in terms of its growth basically. So I don't think it's any slower than any other anthurium. I'm kind of also looking at my regal or my regale behind the camera now. That is possibly one of my slowest growing anthuriums. But this maybe not as fast as the crystallinum but relatively, relatively fast. Not hugely, hugely fast, but relatively fast. I did find that it grows a lot faster since it's kind of matured a lot more and it's got these kind of leaves. And I think anybody who's seeing me handle this leaf all the time is probably gonna cringe at their camera, but <laughs> it's a relatively robust plant, it's fine. But um, yeah, I mean, I think if I benchmark it like I normally do with the pothos in my conservatory environment, so if a pothos in the summer it might have two or three leaves growing this one will probably push out a leaf basically this is also for me in my experience probably because i got a slightly more mature plant it's abundant with inflorescences as well so when it first got it last year i was just like right let's pollinate i've got so many seedlings of this mixed with a crystallinum it's absolutely ridiculous i still annoyingly i don't think i've got any of the male pollen basically to pollinate the female stages of this plant at the moment but I might be able to and see what happens there but yeah so one leaf in a month in the summer or growing period versus the pothos which we might have two or three leaves in the winter if a pothos might get one leaf this might get a leaf every two months or three months so it doesn't stop at least in my experience it doesn't stop growing entirely it just takes a bit longer for those leaves to come in and it is quite an impressive plant i do have a tiny new leaf that is happening there i don't know whether or not that's getting picked up um i'll see if i can get this in the close-up in the b-roll but it's really small and very thin when it first comes out and sometimes you see that it's really insignificant like most anthuriums when they grow their leaves tiny 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 and then they grow particularly long the one thing i will say is have a look at the petiole, so what attaches the leaf to the stem with anthuriums, because a lot of the times that will size up quickly. So sometimes even if you have a tiny, tiny leaf, but you see the petiole and it's very, very thick, that means that, that leaf is probably going to be huge, basically. So with this leaf here, there was a very significant petiole and the leaf is very significant because it's there to support the leaf as it grows, essentially. So very, very interesting plant when it comes to speed of growth, basically, because slightly faster than most anthuriums, but not super, super fast. So ease of propagation with this one, when it comes to, and the only way I have propagated this is by pollination. Really, really simple to pollinate. It started being, um, it started showing the berries and the pollination quite quickly. And I think, I actually did my anthurium pollination video on this specific anthurium's pollination and I'll see if I can link it somewhere so you can actually check that out because I know there's a lot of people recently that have been messaging me going, oh, is there an anthurium pollination video? I don't know what I named it, but I think people are struggling to find it, but I'll, I'll link it at the top of this one basically so you should be able to find it. The thing that I will say about ease of propagation, yes, it was relatively straightforward to pollinate it, However, having pollinated my uh, Metallicum and my Crystallinum, I'm still waiting one day, I might be able to do the Forgetii and the Regal, but they went to berries and the berries matured a lot faster than this one did. So from the point that it got pollinated, it started showing the berries, but the berries only got mature enough nearly two, three months later in order for me to be able to pop them out and take the seeds out and put them into my prop box basically. So that was something to bear in mind, at least in my experience. And as I said, I've only done it once, but that has been my experience. In terms of kind of stem propagation, I've never really tried it with this plant. So I don't know if you do know and you have done it, 
please, please do comment down below. I'd love to find out as much as everybody else would actually. This is also one of the M theorems that doesn't, at least in my experience, hasn't ever popped out. My crystallinum does that like crazy. This isn't one that will pop out a secondary plant that you can then pick out of the soil or whatever growing media you have it and have a secondary plant at that point. At least that's been in my experience. But yeah, let's move on to the next topic. So on to availability. So I touched on this briefly with this one. This isn't, even to this day, this isn't a plant that I see come up very, very often. There is another kind of strap leaf anthurium, which for some reason it's kind of eluding me at the moment. I'll see about putting the name here. But that one, interestingly enough, in the UK, I've seen it come up a bit more frequently, I think. And again, I'm not entirely sure. I've not grown that one specifically. I think that one is slightly more challenging with this one, which is why I find it quite interesting that this one isn't the dominant one that you find. Because the Vitarifolium generally, from what I'm hearing from most people, is relatively straightforward. The one thing I will say about the other one, and I cannot, I cannot remember it for no love, no money. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the reason why that one is slightly more desirable, it's also, at least from what I was seeing, at least two or three or even four times the price of this, is because the inflorescence on that one, so this is an inflorescence on this one, and it's relatively standard, kind of no different than any other anthurium inflorescent. And again, I'll get you a B-roll shot of that. That one does have an inflorescence that corkscrews down like a little pig's tail, which is kind of cool. And I think that's part of the reason why most people want it. I don't think it's massively dissimilar in terms of look to the Vidarifolium, but coming back to the availability aspect of it, back then when I got it, there wasn't that many around. You can find the odd seller that will have it. These are definitely plants that are usually available from growers in the Far East. If you want to kind of import plants in, this is one that I keep seeing over and over there. Uh, I don't see this come up very often. I think there's at least a few now on maybe things like eBay. They might be very, very juvenile. But in my experience, and, and, I, and as I said, have a look at the photo from the background section from my care app. I did get it and it wasn't fully mature, but it wasn't juvenile or kind of a plant at that point. So it's one of those things that you can get a hold of it, but it might not be able to be such a mature plant, at least here in my environment, like in the UK and Europe. It might be different when you are. Price wise for this one, I got it and I think it was kind of high double digits, very, very low triple digits when I bought it, I think. I don't think the price has fluctuated too much. And I don't think it's because this plant is particularly slow. I will say the seedlings from the seeds of this are a bit slower than other seedlings that I have. They're still growing nicely, but they're a bit slower. Um, but I think it's because not that many people know about this plant, or maybe not that many people want it. It's, it's a very, it's, you either want it or you don't essentially, because it's very, very specific. But for me, definite jungle vibes. And that kind of notion that you can put it on a tall shelf and actually get something growing in a location that you probably won't be able to grow most other things because they want top down lighting. This is a good option for that as well. So I really truly hope that this is one that we see more in more people's collections or coming up a lot more often available to buy. <music> Moving on to pests with this one. And interestingly with this one, I trying to think back on the type of pests that I've had on this. So I've had the occasional thrip on this one, which is very unlike a lot of anthuriums. Generally for most of my anthuriums, you might get the occasional thrip, but then this one didn't have that many, but it did have a couple basically. Uh, I think I've also had uh, spider mite on this at some point, but again, nothing huge and maybe some white fly, but not a particularly pest prone anthurium, at least in my experience. 
The one thing I will say, and you might be able to see some of these yellowing leaves in the back there, and it's because at some point I think this one got overwatered. I did repot it at that point, and I will talk a bit more about that in the accessories section. But it didn't have any root rot. It is just an anthurium that, at least in my experience, and from what I've heard from other people, likes to dry out a bit more than other anthuriums do. So moving on to accessories for this one, and this one does actually have a few things that I want to say in terms of accessories here. So you might be able to see, and I'll see if I can grab it because you know me, even my B-rolls are warts and all. <laughs> um, this is an Annette pot now. It was an Annette pot before. I had it in my usual Aroid soil mix and it was doing really well in that one. But I think it was getting to the point where it was drying out too much between waterings. So I had that moment with the yellowing of the leaves. It hasn't lost the leaves. The leaves have been that kind of color for a while now. They're still there. Didn't get any real root rot on the plant. But at that point, I repotted it into pond now. I've got it in self in a um, water reservoir at the bottom. I'm using basically the drip tray as a watering reservoir. And what you might be able to see is I've got those kind of metal tie, uh, plant ties, and again, I'll get this in the B-roll, to anchor this because this is very forward heavy. And this is something that I will say you need to bear in mind with this plant. You won't need a plank, you won't need a moss pole, you won't need a support stick, but this gets very forward heavy at some point. The more it grows, the more forward heavy it gets. So either have it in a very heavy, even if it's just a decorative pot at the top, so it doesn't topple over, you might still getting it toppling over uh, because you'd imagine if this was growing in nature, this would be in nooks and crannies of the trees and it will be attaching itself in such a way that that forward weight of it won't rip it out of the tree trunks normally. So at least that's what I would imagine from what I've seen from pictures. I think that holds true. But definitely with this, and this is another reason why it worked for me with the net pot, because the net pot has also got little kind of holes on the side. And I'm assuming it's to attach it to its intended purpose, which I think is for ponds. Uh, but what I've done is I've tied that up and I've tied it onto my metal frame shelf just to really anchor it down. And what I've also done is because I've moved it out and it was so top heavy, it was lifting itself out of pond and pond for anybody who's used pond knows how heavy it is and how much it will keep a plant in. I've had to put another tie along that kind of growing stem along the top part of the pond so that it kind of holds it down into place so it doesn't unroot itself from the pond itself. <laughs> so definitely one to kind of think about. This is a, a very, very cool plant, but it does come with its own set of unique challenges and not challenges that you will probably have with a lot of other house plants or even anthuriums. So just one to bear in mind. Um, I do fertilize this weekly, weekly at uh, this stage of the year where it's kind of like spring, summer, and it's a bit more of the growing season. I tend to treat this very similar to my kind of Phalaenopsis orchids. So I will let this fully dry out in terms of the media. Then I will flush the water through and fill the water reservoir and basically rinse and repeat. Obviously in the winter months, there's less light, it's colder. That watering will really kind of come down quite low. I think in the winter, this got, even with the soil, when I had it in, it got to the stage where I was watering it once every 20 days. So that gives an indication of kind of how robust this plant was. And it did take a while to kind of suck up that water. In the summer now, it's getting through its water reservoir at an alarmingly fast rate, but it's also generating all these beautiful scrappy leaves for me. So I do not want to hinder its progress. But yes, one that you definitely need to kind of think slightly out of the box in terms of how you attach it so it doesn't kind of like throw itself off whatever shelf you've got it on, basically. But you definitely need to have this on a shelf so that the leaves tumble down. This isn't one that you're going to have on the ground because it kind of defeats the purpose. You'll just get really long leaves in the way on the ground. So 
just something to bear in mind. But so it needs to be at the edge of whatever shelf you're going to be using this. And you definitely want to hide, have it relatively high because I'm trying to think of the biggest leaf that it has is maybe this one. And I'm still going, uh, which I don't know what it is in Imperial, but in meters, I would probably say it's close to a meter and a half. So that's one leaf, which is a meter and a half long. So give it some height and also bear in mind that if you really want to grow this large, you might even have to move it up a shelf as well at some point to just really facilitate for those really, really long leaves. So coming on to final thoughts. So my final thoughts for this, and you might have been able to kind of benchmark already with the level of excitement that I had for this plant when I was describing all the other sections. This plant, if I was scoring, if say, I'll start with what I usually do is knowing what I know now, if I didn't have this plant, would I purchase this? 100%. Don't even need to think about that one. Yep. Definitely one that I would easily buy because for most house plants that we get, we tend to get them for their foliage more so than the blooms. And this is one that is very different and unique. And the thrill that you get seeing those very, very long leaves is indescribable, basically. So very, very, very cool. Ethereum, I would definitely get it again. As I've mentioned, not a particularly difficult one to care for either. So that's always a good thing as well, especially when you're talking about Ethereums. And Usually, as I would say, normally I'd score it from zero being the worst, 10 being the best. For this plant, I would say a solid strong eight or nine based on some of the other plants in my collection. Against a lot of my other anthuriums, this would be a nine or a 10. It's easy to care for, it's very rewarding, and it's just a bit more tolerant of neglect, basically. <laughs> it's not a bad thing especially because sometimes with anthuriums you need to baby them a bit. This is one that doesn't really need that much babying. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say in this section. Uh, if you've got your own experiences and you want to share, please do so down below. I would love to hear them as I'm sure other people would as well. And yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>